Hey guys, my name's Nick. I'm a Microsoft Certified Expert Administrator. I create a lot of content for MSPs. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to set up Office 365 email encryption and some of the settings that are part of this feature. Before we get into everything here, just wanted to show an example of the end user experience. So this is me as an Office 365 user sending an email encrypted to a Gmail account and this is what the end user sees. So before we got into the actual policy configuration, I just want to show you the outcome so you know where we're headed. And also here, before we get started, I just want to go over licensing real quick because that is important. You do need Azure Information Protection Plan 1, and this can be bolted on to existing legacy plans like Exchange Online Plan 1 or Microsoft 365 Business Standard, which was recently renamed from Office 365 Business Premium. It's a $2 add-on that you can bolt on and it does come with Azure Information Protection labeling as well too for classification of documents and policies around that. So it's not just encryption that you're getting for $2, which is cool because some services out there in the market are just $2 for solely encryption. The other piece though here is it does uh, come included with some of these plans like Microsoft 365 Business Premium is the SMB offering here. It's bolted on, it's $20 a user a month, and it's also traditionally only been part of the E3 plan. So it's good to know just before you get into things here what it, what it looks like. So within the 365 admin portal, to set up the policies that you're going to want to put into place here to encrypt documents or encrypt email messages, is go into the Exchange Admin Center here and you'll go under mail flow and rules so within here we can create custom mail flow rules as an if then statements to encrypt the email messages if it contains certain things if it has certain messaging things like that you are able to set these rules so that it automatically encrypts that message but users can also encrypt messages on demand too either in the web version of outlook or in the client version and i'll be showing you that here as well too so within the rules section here, you'll want to click on the plus icon and click on apply 365 message encryption. And here we just have to define a few different parameters. So you can name it whatever you like here. And you can say apply this rule if, and this is the most common one I see in the sense of setting this up. We're saying that the subject or body includes these words. Most people are doing here encrypt or secure. I prefer secure because it's more identifiable with our end users and they're more likely to adopt and remember something like this than to type in encrypt every time. So I like to put in secure. It's already got the message encryption here, but we need to select our RMS template. If this is a newer ten tenant uh, that you're setting this up for, you have encrypt and do not forward here as defaulted RMS templates. You won't see these other two which I added here. They're custom labels that I've added and published within this tenant as well too. I'm not going to get into that as part of this scope, but just know that you can get more granular outside of the defaulted templates here as well too. So within here, we are going to go ahead and select encrypt. And then anything else in here, I like to leave defaulted and click on save. But we'll go ahead and go into the mail section here and click on new message. Now you'll notice in the web-based version, we do have the encrypt button here, of which you can use to simply encrypt on demand without having to type in secure to the subject line. So again, these can get more granular in the policies you define if you want to make it something that's you know not as straightforward. But when you encrypt here, you can change the permissions. And again, it has all of your labels and templates that you can select from. You can change this to do not forward, for instance, um, but that'll be listed there. But if I remove the encryption and I just say, this is going to an outside um, person here, not that one. And I just say secure. And I'm gonna put in sensitive information and go ahead and send that. Uh, while that's sending, I'm gonna go ahead and pop into the Outlook client and just show you here. Whenever you open this up, you have the encrypt button under the options section here as well. And you can choose to apply a certain RMS template here additionally. So this, this is in the Outlook client version as well too after you do publish those. 
Back in the Gmail portal here, I'm gonna go over and click on the message that just got sent and you can see this is what I was showing you guys in the beginning. You have all of this and I have custom branded this as well too. I showed that in another video, but you can customize this entire message that gets sent out. When you click on read, it brings you into this Office message encryption portal and it'll ask you either to sign in with your Google credentials here or to get a one-time passcode just to verify your identity. So I'll click on the passcode there and it sends a passcode to the email address so that makes sure that you can authenticate and you're the correct user here. So I'll put that in there and it'll be good for 15 minutes if they didn't put that in until they would have to get another token. But then this is the message encryption portal here where they can view the encrypted message and any attachments if they were listed. And the cool part here is if you reply, it replies encrypted as well too. So we'll do that and we'll send. So this will come in in a second. And I got that. And the cool part is also this is you know, encrypted at rest and in transit and also previously you had to go into the web-based version just to see encrypted messages, but you can see them as well in the Outlook client. So if I'm here, you previously would tell me to go to the web version, but I can see them straight from this portal now as well too. So that's really cool. So that's all the policies and settings that I wanted to show you on the baseline in sense of what you would do to set this up within your particular tenant. But now I want to go into some of the more granular features here uh, that you can set up and show you what this looks like as well on mobile. So we have these particular settings here as well too. So you can do a few things and I'll link this below as well too. One of which is that you can manage whether these other users outside your organization can use and sign into the Office 365 message encryption portal. So I'd leave this on if I was you, so that way you can still send messages securely to people who aren't using Microsoft. Um, manage the use of one-time passcodes. For example, if you wanted to uh, disable one-time passcodes for some reason, you could do that here and you can enable them back in with PowerShell. Manage the display of the encrypt button in Outlook. So this is just, again, this message here where we see this uh, encrypt button on top. You can disable that if you really wanted to for some reason. Again, I think just having it there is better for the end users to be able to do that on demand as well. And this other one here enables server-side decryption of email messages in the iOS mail app users section. So I'll show you this here in a second as far as the end user experience goes, but if users are just using their native mail client on their phone, like their iOS device, and they get a message that's encrypted, they're going to get like similar kind of message that you saw on the Gmail account where it's going to ask them to open it up in the secure portal on the web and sign in or get a one-time passcode. And that's even with users within your organization. So they recommend either you turn this off so it can decrypt it before it hits that mailbox, Microsoft would decrypt it, or you can leave it encrypted and it can just be seen on the Outlook application itself. So you could download that from the iTunes store, the Google Play store, and just use that. You can read the message like we were doing in our Outlook client on a desktop as well too. So that's those are the more granular settings. And then these other ones here, uh, enable server-side decryption of email tab message for web browser mail clients. So again, similar setting there it, that you would want to do. I'm sure all the external recipients use the OME portal to read encrypted email. This is more so for advanced email encryption. So for licensing, again, you have Office Message Encryption that comes as part of Azure Information Protection Plan 1. But then you have Advanced Message Encryption, which comes as part of the enterprise level plans like E5, for instance, as well. And what this does, it allows you to basically set an expiration date for certain messages or remove them altogether from somebody's mail uh, portal. So if they only use the OME portal, you have the capabilities to 
basically enforce those settings. But if they don't use the OME portal and they're opening it within their Outlook client, then you don't, obviously, because it's caching it locally. So that's that's basically the, the premise behind this one, if you wanted to set that as up as well too. But just note, again, advanced message encryption is required and it does require you to have these particular higher level SKUs that you need to bolt on to be able to do those settings. And then you can customize the appearance. And this is what I did. I added the branding and I added a custom message down below. I'll have another video out for that just to save time for this one. But this is basically, you know, getting as granular as you want here too. They say this one needs the advanced message encryption licensing as well, but I was able to do it with Microsoft Business Premium. So uh, I would say that you can go ahead and do that. And I would do that just for getting some, um, you know, branding on the message itself helps users trust it. If it is something that's intended for them when they're going and clicking on a link. So the new capabilities for OME, this is something where they've kind of transitioned this over the time. Like I mentioned, there's that one period where you can view encrypted messages within the client and they've made a lot of additional settings as well too. But if you wanted to roll back for some reason, you could do that here as well. So those are the, the more you know granular settings that you need PowerShell to go in and configure. At the very minimum, I'd say just put up the custom branding for your, your message and add any messaging you want there. And then kind of look into these other features like the encrypt button and things like that. So now I just wanted to briefly dive in and show you the end user experience in the Outlook environment as well too, or an iOS device, or the mobile experience and what we were talking about here. So let's pop over there into that environment. So on the mobile device here, we have the message that's encrypted and it looks just like what we got from what we uh, did in Gmail. And here we're just being asked to sign into the web-based version. So if you didn't want them to have to do this, that's where you would use that PowerShell setting there to turn that off so it decrypts before it hits their, their email. And after we sign in here, it'll load up and we'll be able to see our message and just like the web-based version, because this is the web-based version, we'll be able to open that up, see any attachments or any messages there, but still have that message that says it's encrypted. That's everything I wanted to show you guys for this particular video. If you guys have any questions or comments on message encryption, feel free to leave them below. Please like or subscribe on the YouTube channel. Thanks guys, have a great day.